Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, I'm joined by Bob Maglani from Hoot, and we're going to be speaking about how to increase your myopia management conversions on the Myopia Podcast. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Hey friends, before we get started on the podcast, I just wanted to bring up that we're doing something called the Myopia Workshop. Our first one is December 6th and 7th at the Hilton Bellevue, which is right outside of Seattle. We're going to be bringing in uh, leading experts around myopia management, uh, Randy Kojima, Pat Caroline, uh, Christina Yi, uh, and, and others to talk about myopia management and implementing it into your practice. So many people are telling me, I want to get started on myopia management, or we're doing myopia management, but our conversions aren't very high. We want to be looking at how to get your conversions to 90%. How do you talk with parents and kiddos to get them started on myopia management as soon as possible? Check out the myopiaworkshop.com and plan to be with us December 6th and 7th. If you're listening to this after December 6th or 7th, 2024, make sure to stay tuned to the Myopia Workshop uh, website, and we'll be directing you towards other workshops in the future. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks again for joining us for this episode. I'm uh, honored to get to be joined uh, by Bob Maglani. And Bob, you and I have kind of got to know each other a little bit over the last couple of years, which has been absolutely awesome. I know a lot of people have been seeing you. You've got some incredible social media content and you've shared some things. You've got Hoot and you've been making a huge impact in the dry eye world and myopia uh, and, and other places. But maybe not everybody knows your history. Can you give us a little bit of a background. How did you get into eye care and uh, give us a little bit of the genesis of Bob? Sure. Dr. Kading, thank you so much for having me on. I listen to your podcast every chance I get. And I'm actually uh, really, a, I'm a fan because you ask great questions of your guests. So I really thank appreciate you. it, you know, being invited to, to join you today. Uh, so I grew up um, in a large uh, uh, business. I mean, actually it's a small business to begin with. I had a Dairy Queen. Growing up mm -hmm. as a family business. Yeah, we were immigrant parents. You know, we had the Dairy Queen in New Jersey. And then uh, after that, so I, I wrote, you know, wrote a book about it, about my experience with Dairy Queen. Then I grew up, went to work at Pfizer, a uh, large company in New York City, as we all know about. And I was doing everything from lots of different things in my career, 23 years at Pfizer. And yeah. uh, from sales, marketing, you know, pricing, a lot of different things. My wife is an optometrist. Her name is Dr. Shafali Miglani. She practices yeah. in private practice in New Jersey. So that's how I got into this business. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. she would invite me to Vision Expo in New York. She would say, you know, about 10 years ago, she said to me, hey, I've started doing this thing called myopia management. You wear these lenses at night and you'll wake up. And I'm like, oh, it's interesting. Tell me more. She goes, yeah, these kids really need it. But these parents are in the way. So this is, by the way, Dr. Andy, this is dinner table <laughs> conversations. Okay. Right, right, like, right. right. Yeah. Kids are eating their spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> Here we are talking about myopia. And I'm like, explain to me what is myopia? And she'd have this long drawn. She's a scientist by nature. She's a very analytical. She's an she, incredible chemistry, clinician. Yeah. You know what it is? You know what exactly what I'm talking about? It's uh, So she's she got into that and she's like, oh, these parents don't get it. They don't sign up. I'm like, well, you know, how, what are you sharing with them? How are you get convincing them to sign up for myopia management? She says, well, here's a clinical study I got at VBD or, or, a, or a PowerPoint. And I'm like, these are just circles to me, honey. I mean, I mm -hmm. love you, but this is medical <laughs> jargon. And I got to be honest with you, when our, the way we communicate in science in science communications, like I learned at Pfizer, is you've got to dumb it down a little bit and really hone in on some some key things. So anyway, that's kind of the genesis of where Hoot was born. It was this idea of how do we kind of help each other in her practice, in her her in her practice. And she's she knew like psychology, so she's like, okay, I've got to send something to them before they come in, and all that. And so I said, okay, well, you know, you got to talk videos. And so it was this husband and wife couple, who one's an optometrist, one's a marketer. And trying to figure out the problem of educating and sorry, converting parents to sign mm -hmm. up their children into myopia management. Education yeah. is one part of it, but ultimately you want to sign up. You want right. them to pay you to give right. care to the child that's needed. 
You so that's that kind of the genesis of Hoot. That's where we kind of started. We kind of helped her out a little bit in a part-time basis. Then I had left Pfizer um, in those days. And then I became a motivational speaker, an author. I wrote some books. And then all along my own journey, I helped her. And then during COVID really was when her business took off uh, for myopia management because we had all this, you know, tools, automation tools and videos and everything. And then that's where we realized, wow, this is this tool that toolkit could be really useful for others. And that's when we launched right. it. Yeah. So I, I just I love this because, you know, who in eye care or in, you know, some sort of small business hasn't enrolled their, you know, husband or wife to be able to be like, you know, this is a conversation and then making suggestions and using their experience and whatever field they came from. And that's that's where this was, right? You were just trying to help your wife be more successful in her business by things that you had not known and you had done. And then you developed this. And it must have been that she was like, oh, our conversion rate is going up. These yes. tools are working for us. Yeah, And then yeah. you're like, well, why don't we share it with other people? Is that kind of how that all came about? Did you even think about it being a business when you first started helping her? I did not at all, David. I wow. was, such, you know, <laughs> I was stuck in her office and during COVID because I, 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 we have three kids. I wanted to get yeah. out of the house. I cannot stay mm -hmm. at home with my kids. It's, it's insane. <laughs> and so I had to get out of the office. I get out of the house. I went to her office. I just worked from there. So we would, I would create these tools. And the first thing she would say to me, can I curse on air? I don't know if I can do that. She said, this is shit. Make this better. Like, this is terrible. This is not it for me. Uh -huh. This is a, a spouse <laughs> talking. So our first customer, our my spouse was really, really brutal. And that made me so much better. I'm like, I got to do this for her because she's on my case every day to fix this, fix this, fix this. So that's kind of, that was the first evolution. And then the second is like, okay, your conversion is increasing. And then a couple yeah. of her optometry friends would reach out and like, hey, what are you doing? Shvali, what are you, how are you getting all these patients? And then the wall of fame, you know, I know you've got it and other doctors have it that, um, you know, all these patients, you know, went from that to hundreds of myopia management and a very high price point. And then we realized, okay, maybe there's something there for others. Uh, and then we kind of launched it and to see how it would go. And then mm -hmm. we had a number of doctors reach out and, you know, it got better and better, but yeah, that's kind of how it started. Yeah. That's awesome. What, um, what do you think, what do you break those up into? What are, what are the, what are the products and, and, you know, not, you know, maybe somebody wants to join who, but what do you, what did you observe when you came into her practice? Are these hurdles maybe that, us as eye care providers put up or the hurdles that parents are experiencing in that conversion, right? Yeah. Everybody provides great insight, like, oh, your kid is advancing. They should, you know, you should do something about it, right? But getting to yes, right? How, like, what are some of the practitioner hurdles? What are some of the the parent hurdles that you saw and that you thought, oh, we got to, we got to check these off? Yeah, that's a great question, Dr. Katie. I know, and then just by you phrasing that, I mean, you did such a nice job at articulating that. Um, so that would be the first thing. I think there's three things. One is the language, the language that optometrists use in educating parents. You just explained it to me in a very thoughtful, sort of normal, you know, normal jargon manner, right? Mm -hmm. So the language is super important. And most optometrists, when I've observed in exam rooms, I've spent a lot of time in comps exams with optometrists across the country. And their first reaction to mom, you know, little Johnny has uh, myopia, it's your sign. And the world is becoming myopic. It's an epidemic, 50%. And then if you don't do something, there's Mac early onset of macular degeneration and threaten. And the mom is like, what the heck are you talking about? I just brought my kid for an eye exam and a pair of glasses. Dude, I got to go back to work. So the language is really, really important. So it's yeah. not about the, it's, it's, so that's the first thing is the language. One of the things we, we kind of, we, we educate parent, uh, optometrists on and the system, the, all the communication that goes out automatically from Hoot, the language is mom, this device, this, I'm picking up my iPhone here. This yeah. device is the devil. It is destroying our children's vision. What is your son's relationship with devices? Dude, just step back and ask that question to parents. 
<gasps> guilt, right? That emotional <laughs> connection. So that's the first thing is the language we use in the exam room is critical. And we teach that, we train optometrists using Hoot and all of our tools use uh, language like that. That is part emotion, part uh, science and part kind of like uh, hopeful. You don't want to like, you don't want to be like, so like you're going to die if you don't get my machine. All right, that's the first thing. Second is um, a process. Most optometrists who want yep. to do specialty care don't have a process. It's chaos. It is absolute chaos. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes I do that. Oh, I had to be doing this. I'd be doing that. A lot of the optometrists, one of the biggest mistakes, uh, Dr. Kading, that most optometrists make, the biggest mistake is they cram the comprehensive exam. They mm -hmm. cram it, cram it, cram it. They're like, I'm so good, Bob, watch this. In three minutes, I'm going to, so it's a process. So you, you need to break it up. You need to take the, from the comprehensive and send them to the, come back for the ocular service evaluation or the myopia consult. That's critical. Now, a lot of doctors like yourself, Dr. Katie, you've been doing it for a while and you, you're great at it. In the comp, you're like, okay, I got this. I know what I'm doing. And most parents with a very, very sophisticated doctor like Dr. Kading and others would say, yes, okay, I'll sign up. But 90% of the optometrists we've seen across the country, they don't sign up at the first visit. Yeah. No. Or if they do, it's a very low price point. It's yep. like, you know, it's like not even worth it for you. And then yeah. they give you hassle or eat up your chair time. So really understanding, and we've developed kind of what's called a hoot method, which is a three-step process. And what happens in those three steps is very critical. And uh, then the third thing, the third thing we've done is um, with automation and, and a system with education. So all completely marketing automation. So from the comp to the consult visit, the system automatically drips content that's relevant to the parent and the child. Mm -hmm. And it has, it's customized. So it says Dr. Kading at the bottom. It says mom's name, dad's name, child's name in there. And that content goes out and it educates. And this content, not only for the first part of their journey, uh, uh, which is the, you know, the prospect phase, the, 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 the comp phase, but INR training, there's also behavioral coaching. So for instance, how do you, how does a parent change screen time on their child's phone? Most parents don't know how to do that. I learned how to do that. I'm like, we need a video on that. And so those are the three kind of things we do is really is the language, the process. The process is probably the most important because most of our sure. tell us, Bob, before who I didn't have a process. I didn't know what to do. And you've kind of made it simple for me. And the third part is all the tools from automation and digital forms, you know, voice memo, mm -hmm. send your own videos, all that. That's part of the system. So those are the three things. Yeah, I think that's uh, really key. You know, um, everybody, you, you may or may not know this, Bob, but every optometry school has a communications course. And, uh, you know, we're telling people that they've got glaucoma. You, 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 you're trained in this course of how to tell people all these things. There's always one schmuck classmate who gets the flirty flirty patient that they have to deal with in class and you know this there's this patient crawling all over them in front of all their right. classmates um right but uh then you get out and practice and you know you spent all these years doing clinical care and you're talking about the same thing and now we go to a conference and we're like myopia management and now we're going to you know educate somebody about something that's happening and it's going to cause a problem down the road and you know, there's, there's issues and your kids guys are getting worse. And this is the first they've heard about it. And, you know, all this money that you, you, you're exactly right. And I think really um, the reason why the language is so bad is because we're trying to cram the exam, right. Is exactly your point and uh, putting it all into one place. Um, yeah, you, you're exactly right. It doesn't matter what it is. Right. The insurance company is paying for you to do an eye exam and give a patient a well health check yes, and a prescription for glasses. That's right. And That's anything right. you do beyond that, you're just doing for free, right? right? And so do what the insurance company is paying you for and yes. bring the patient back for everything else. It doesn't you're exactly right. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's a vision therapy consultation, a myopia consultation, a dry eye consultation. And in our practice, well over 50% of the patients come back for something, right? Right. And that's really how it is, is I don't want to see exams all day. So yeah. if I see something, I'm going to bring a patient back. And that's how you develop a specialty practice, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Specialty care is really the way to go. I think you've nailed it exactly right. 
and that your insurance company is paying you for that comp for that specific thing. Now, if you just think about sales, all right, just not in optometry sales, just think about sales as an industry, right? I spent all my career mm -hmm. mostly in sales and marketing outside of optometry. Mm -hmm. It takes seven to eight touches yeah. typically to convert mm -hmm. any kind of customer, any kind of prospect, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like seven to eight. In certain industries, it's 15 or 16, okay? Yeah. So what we're trying to do in optometry is to do it in one like, how are we so special? Like, how do we realize, like, uh, you know, like the world, you know, that does sales from, you know, big companies like, you know, Google, all these companies in the world, they convert their prospects in six, seven to eight touches. Okay. Yeah. We want to do it in one. Come on. Yeah. And then the second thing is, you know, your staff gets so upset because the mom in the exam rooms, like, hey, tell me a little bit about it. Okay. And boom, Pandora's box. You're behind 15, 20 minutes. They talk mm -hmm. to you about all these questions. All these questions come up. So specialty care requires a special touch. Yeah. It requires, you know, six to seven touches. And that's kind of what we do in the process at Hoot is look at those six or seven touches and automate, you know, good 60, 70% of that. So what you're doing is really just the comp and the console and yeah. everything else we kind of help you figure out and automate, yeah. automate for you. Yeah, but to yeah. me, it's, it's really, it's, it's, you, you said it right, which is like, you have to, so specialty care, you've got to bring them back because that is how you're going to grow your specialty care business. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so key it, along with this is I, I see people who they say, you know, we want to start myopia management, right? right. And then they go and they start talking to patients about things and they don't have, uh, you know, a form. And they might not have even entered what the cost is in their electronic health record. And the patient comes back out and then the doctor's like, hey, we're going to start myopia management. And the staff is like, the, we're going to do what? <laughs> what on this patient? Right. right. So I love the importance of having the process. And I think by and large, Bob, I mean, this is the biggest thing is I've been doing myopia management for 15 years. And I don't think that it's the belief that hasn't drawn people into myopia management. It's the process of how complicated it is, training your staff, teaching a kid how to put contact lenses in, how to talk to parents, how to discuss, you know, something that's maybe a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars with them. So having those tools helps the doctor, whether they're using Hoot or Treehouse or any other thing, having that process. Yes. And if you can put it in on your own, go for it. But have something well laid out and planned ahead that you can then present and look like you know what you're doing. Right. right? Well, that's, yeah. 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 I think that's such a, a key component. And I really like this automation component that you've done. And that's something I've always really admired about Hoot is that, um, you know, I've always hesitated on using other people's videos and other people's materials because I'm like, well, my patient, you know, they don't, they don't know who these people are and I'm sending them off to an, a website or go watch this guy's video or, you know, this, this doctor, she's talking about something here, but I love what you're doing is like, you're pointing it towards them. You're, you're saying, Hey, this is information and here's why I know it's important to you. And it has your name on it and it has my practice name on it. And I know what you're watching. Like I've, I, I know what that video includes yeah. and the touch points that go along the way to help bring them back so that when they do come back into the consultation, they have had many of the questions already answered. Right. Um, and if they don't, then they, they can get through those relatively quickly. And, you know, in, in our office, we really like patients to have already had that education before they show up. And if they don't have, if they haven't watched anything or if they haven't read the information we want them to, we actually will have the parent doing that during pre-testing or when they first check in. And I know that's something that who can do as well yeah. is having those videos right there for the clinician, for that, for that patient. Yeah, I, I, you said something very important, which is um, that, uh, you know, the parents need to perceive that the doctor has their act together. This practice yeah. has their act together. 
and that confidence okay right it has yeah. to come through in every touch that you have so yeah. i'll give you a couple of examples so i think the video one is a very good one so one of the things we do um uh, is we give you a default set of videos that you can use, and we now use AI integration and animation. So it's really beautiful. They're short now and everything. And then second is we customize them with 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 the doctor. So it's the doctor, like you said, the doctor's yep. face going to the doctor's patient. All right, that's 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 the first thing. The second thing is it's really important. It's very very important to prime the parents yeah. before they come in. Right, you got to plant those seeds before they come in and then who has time for that like you know it just it's just it's just very hard to do so priming is important because when they do come in you're not talking to a wall right mm -hmm. and then when you when they do come in where you're the questions are like instead of saying hey what questions do you have for me no you're going to ask as an optometrist you're going to say in the consult hey mom and dad i'm sure you got a chance to look at my videos which way are you leaning towards mm -hmm. and just close your mouth that's mm -hmm. it. Because then the 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 parents will be like, yeah, well, we're thinking about ortho K because you sent us that video yep. about the treatment options. And then the the other thing I think is really important in having your act together is those forms and fees and all that. Yeah. Oh my God. I've seen some horrific, horrific forms. There's no consent. Yeah. Okay, yep. you know, no, I mean, what happens if if you're giving atropine, for example, which is not FDA approved for the indication for myopia mm -hmm. management, it's approved for other things, and you don't state that in the forms, right? There's legal issues. Then ortho K, right? Then there's then in my side, in the natural use, you've got all these different complicated you know, treatment options, and there's no standardized yep. templates. So what we've done is create those templates. You All you have to do is put in your fees and whatever you yep. want. All that legal language we spent the legal dollars on, and then it just goes out and the parents get it on their phone. They sign with their yeah. fingers. Again, yeah. you got to have your act together or look like you got to have your act together yeah. Yeah. in a way because then just parents are like, yeah, I can I can pay $5,000 for it, okay? Because this practice knows what they're doing. This doctor is clearly yeah. an expert. She sent me all these videos beforehand. Look at these forms came in through the system. She knew before I was coming in for the consult, what the, you know, the, she sent me these videos. It's her videos. She's yeah. clearly an expert. And then, yeah. you know, and then I get INR training on video. So all of that demonstrates to the parents, okay, I'm going to pay you. And that's how you get conversion is when the, yeah. the confidence comes across from the optometrist. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Bob, the the thing that I hear oftentimes is, well, I, you know, I, I presented it and, and they said no. Um, and I have this saying is that uh, patients will either convert or they will quit our practice. And the reason we do, well, one of the things that we do is that conversion is pretty high at the consult, but there are patients who are going to say no. And usually it's because they don't understand or they don't see the value. And so I, I just want to throw this out there for my audience is that when you do get a no, usually you've done axial length and you've checked that. And then, you know, we always throw in the free visit at three and six and we'll see a patient free until they convert because they always do or they quit, right? So that additional education that can go out to them after they've said no, like here's some more information and we're going to see your kid. They come in for that three month and now the axial length has increased just mm -hmm. like we anticipated and said that it would or at the six month. And so that additional information that can be, you know, really fit in with the, the language the process and then the automation of just making that your conversions will go up and up and up and up when that process of seeing somebody yeah. that says no and what is the process to help them to get to go right yeah yeah i love that no that's a great that's like a very common thing that happens either with dry eyes certainly we've seen it with mm -hmm. myopia as well so one of the things we've done and so if you think about sales but sales general outside of optometry, it's just generally say if the customer says no, no doesn't mean never. It means not right, right now. Okay. Yep. That's the first thing. Not right now. I'm not ready because like exactly you said, the value, they don't see the value. Okay. No doesn't mean never, just means not right now. Therefore, we've made it super simple to we've got a a, a nurture automation campaign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nurture means what happens is your hot lead gets warm the time they leave your office. And they get colder and colder, if you think about yeah. the sales prospect, right? As time yeah. goes on. 
So what we want to do is we would keep that lead into simmer, right? Little, little stove on the simmer is yep. we send them love. We send them videos. And the videos we send yep. them are not like retinal detachment is going to happen, okay? It's going to be like, listen, mom and dad, um, I understand that your child has myopia or, you know, hey, Mr. Jones, you have dry eye disease or my building illness function. And I understand you're not ready to sign up with this treatment in clinic procedure or treatment right now. But over the next six to 12 months, one email yeah. a month, we're going to send you information that's going to help you at home. So for instance, uh, in Myopia Nurture Campaign, we have a 12-month campaign. It's automated. Just all you have to do is hit, you know, hey, patient didn't convert, boom. Six in the next 12 months, they're going to videos automatically from you. Yep. You don't even know it. It's about sleep in children. How do you get your child to sleep more? How do you get your child to reduce screen time? How do you get your child to open the curtains when they study? So these are value added content that parents yes. really care about. Or in, in, my, in, in MGD and in dry eye disease, it's about lid wipes. It's about omega threes, right? It's about blinking exercises. So nurture campaigns to us are a great way to keep that warm lead warm until they say go and then until mm -hmm. they're ready to sign up. And they eventually yeah. do. Like you said, they eventually come back because you've sent them so much value, yes. them so much content, added so much interesting things. You're not pushing them to, to come into treatment, you know, but you're doing is say, hey, I'm always available if you want to come back and talk to us. And here's mm -hmm. my link in my book now calendar, right? Like mm -hmm. give them all the tools just to book the appointment but you give them value. And that to yeah. us is what the power of the nurture campaign is all about. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bob, what I love about you is that you're not just here to sell hoop, but you're here to make doctors better. And that's kind of the quest of you in life. And you you started with your, your wife and how do you improve her practice? And you're drawing that out into so many other people. So thank you for your contribution to our industry and uh, to how you're bringing your expertise back into eye care. And we're, we're sure grateful for for what you're doing. So thanks, man, for being on the podcast. Dr. Haining is a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank yeah. you for really being a champion of specialty care in America. You are one of the, you know, very handful of experts that we see that we need more people like yourself to really carry the torch and be the leaders of this profession. So thank you for your, yeah. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for joining us for this episode. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future episodes of the Myopia Podcast. One, two, three, Thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.